Hello and welcome back to Analysis. Since the murder of drummer Lee Rigby in June by a pair of men claiming to be acting in the name of Islam, many people have perceived a rise in Islamophobic attacks in Britain, Muslims being penalised in a backlash following the killing. However, one person who has not been very vocal on this topic has been the Mayor of London, Boris Johnson, whose office had repeatedly failed to reply to questioning over the rise of Islamophobic attacks. Now, though, it seems that Boris has finally conceded that Islamophobia <coughs> is becoming a real problem. A new report by the Runnymede Trust Trust has also warned of a wider increase in racism against other minority groups in the wake of the Lee Rigby attack. Flaminia Jambalvo has more. A recent statement produced by the mayor's office confirms that there has been a spike in Islamophobic crimes following the killing of soldier Lee Rigby in May this year. According to the statement, from the 22nd to the end of May, the average daily total of Islamophobic attacks was approximately nine per day. In June, the rate reduced to an average of just under four per day, and the trend has been moving downward since. These incidents include both harassment and criminal damage. We spoke about the relevance of these figures with Labour London Assembly member Morad Karashi, who demanded the mayor's office provide a definite answer on whether the Woolwich attack sparked anti-Muslim sentiments. Um, I did put this question in in June. It's now been established that we had um, an, a ninefold increase uh, on a daily basis, and uh, most of these assaults were to the person. A definite answer by the mayor on this issue strengthens the the claims of a number of campaigners who have been trying to draw public attention towards this issue. They confirmed that uh, there was some basis to be concerned about uh, the nature of the backlash that occurred after the brutal killing of Lee Rigby. An exclusive report due to be published on Tuesday the 23rd of September obtained by Islam Channel seems to back these concerns. The survey produced by the Runnymede Trust, a race equality think tank, asked black African, black Caribbean, Pakistani, Indian and white British people about discrimination in the aftermath of the Woolwich killing. The report found that the group that felt most discriminated against were black Africans, followed by black Caribbean and then Pakistani. Although all groups said they felt increasingly discriminated against after Woolwich, these findings seem to suggest the backlash is happening on the basis of race as well as religion. Beyond personal crimes against Muslim citizens, the aftermath of the attack has seen a rise in crimes against mosques and Muslim centres in the UK. In a recent speech, Security Minister James Brokenshire said, This summer we have been shocked and appalled by the murder of Mohammed Salim and the attacks on the Aisha Mosque in Walsall, Wolverhampton Central Mosque and Kanzul Iman Masjid in Tiptum. The most recent of these attacks took place at Harlow Islamic Centre in Essex on the 29th of August, when three hooded individuals tried to set the centre ablaze. I was uh, woken up um, by a phone call. There was some incident and um, a, f a fire had been lit. From the CCTV coverage, what we do find is there was a deliberate act where three they had with them a drill and each at they started at the main uh, door where they drilled a hole and squirted some liquid inside. Um. This was not the first hate crime to take place in Harlow Islamic Centre instance, uh, maybe six or 12 months ago, there was an envelope with uh, no Islam in the UK uh, marked on it, which is deliberate again, sent to us at the centre. The local uh, police investigated that, but it turned out that this was a nationwide issue. The, the similar mosques had been sent these uh, such letters and such um, pass. However, a number of commentators, including reporter Andrew Gilligan, have disputed claims of Islamophobia being an issue in the UK and claim that figures have been inflated. The tragic killing of a young soldier appears to have tapped into the frustrations and fears produced by the economic downturn, with potentially devastating impacts for the future of the UK's communities. Flaminia Giambalvo, Islam Channel. Well, joining me in the studio to discuss all this is Masoud Shajare from the Islamic Human Rights Commission, Mohammed Amin, Deputy Chair of the Conservative Muslim Forum and a patron of the charity Tell Mama, and by Skype, Amani El Saraway, caseworker and field officer at Tell Mama, an organization dedicated to recording Islamophobia in the UK. Well, let me start with you, Amani El Saraway. Uh, are you there? We've been told that the, the, these figures have gone up. We also heard that people like Andrew Gilligan and other commentators are claiming the figures are. Uh, inflated. Do you think that in fact they are the right figures or perhaps they, are they too little? 
I mean, I wish I could say they were inflated, um, but unfortunately they're not. Thank you for having me. You should have said that to begin with. Um, but I mean, I think we run into the problem of people not wanting to report to the police, not knowing about our organization as a third party um, reporting facility. So, I mean, what I really can only go off of is, is the statistics that have been published, but I would assume that perhaps they may be a bit less than what people are actually experiencing. Well, Mohammed, I mean, if I can come to you, one thing is to have the figures and the other thing is to do something about the activities that are happening, like the burning of mosques and putting stuff through the windows or the doors and so on. I mean, do you think enough is being done to pursue the perpetrators of this? There are two things that need to be done, one in the short term and one in the long term. In the short term, the Muslim community needs to learn from the sad experience of the Jewish community in the UK, who have had to invest lots of resources in better security equipment, better physical protection of places of worship. They have the volunteers from the Community Security Trust who help to officiate at around sort of Jewish religious events. And sadly, I think the Muslim community needs to organize more of the same. The police have been extremely good at providing all the assistance they can. I regularly share on Twitter stories that I pick up from the press when people have been successfully prosecuted and jailed for anti-Muslim crime, because there's, an early, there's often a perception that nothing happens, people don't get arrested, they don't get found. Many times they do, so, but in this, that's the short term. In the long term, of course, what we need is better education for all people in British society about religions, about the commonality of religions, to take away the motives for religious hatred. Well, Masoud Shadri, I think you were nodding your head in uh, no, I, criticism I, I, of what was just being said. Right. What, what was your criticism? Well, to start with, I actually think, uh, you know, is the reality that Muslims are now second-class citizens in their own country. And we are not getting the same response and same support. If there were two synagogue or two churches or two um, Hindu temples attacked, in, instead of uh, uh, you know over 20 mosques being attacked, there would have been a rapid response. Every mosque would have received uh, support and indeed uh, protection. And if anything, we're going backward. After 9/11 and 7/7, I was involved in, in negotiating with the police and the security, and we had much better apparatus in place. And, you know, I remember Ken Livingston at that time called a meeting and gathered all of us in an all main Muslim organization, and we set up whole infrastructure. This time, uh, you know... Oh, what uh, do you mean by whole infrastructure? Well, infrastructure identifying where are more likely to be vulnerable, you know, organizations, and then putting them on their uh, red, amber, and green sort of uh, categories. This time, nothing was done until uh, five mosques was already attacked. And then, you know, towards the end of it, we had uh, sort of local police coming and telling us that police itself, without any consultation with the Muslim community, have sat down in Scotland Yard and decided which organization should be sort of getting more protection than others. And when I asked them, for, the, for example, in Brent, where we live, how many organizations have been put on the red alert, they said none. And I said, who makes this decision? And they said, well, this was done internally. The reality is that I wrote to the prime minister immediately after this incident, and I highlighted that what we need is protection and to be seen that protection for mosque and Muslim organization is being done. Instead of uh, always cons con being concerned for protection of barracks, which are military bases, which are able to protect themselves against the madman so, with a knife. So you're saying that as soon as that Lee Rigby murder happened, the police should have pretty much Absolutely. gone to every mosque in the country and, and provided some protection. Absolutely. And, and, and my first letter to the prime minister was responded by one of these, you know, uh, sort of... Uh, uh, public relation, you know, jargons, which, which, you know, which, and then immediately as I received it, more mosques were being attacked. So I wrote again and said, look, I've written to you and nothing has been done. And I actually invited the prime minister that we need to not just look at a bunch of loonies in the right and extreme um, sort of uh, white supremacists. We need to look at the, the culture in the whole society, which is becoming Islamophobic. Politicians, media, and indeed the whole society, the culture 
needs to be changed back to a culture away from hate and blaming the whole section of Muslim community, criminalizing whole of them because of the act of few. Well, let me come back to you, uh, Amani al -Sarwe. I mean, apart from these actual acts of violence, which are referred to in these new statistics that the police have produced uh, and Boris Johnson's office have produced, what about the sort of wider Islamophobia of, you know, the way the media reports things, mm -hmm. the way the Muslims are referred to in public? Do you, are you recording any changes there? Is that getting more inflammatory or has it uh, not changed very much? Um, what I would say is the main the main difference, and again, we what we record is what people send in to us. Um, so it, there's sort of a restriction on on what we see based on that. Um, what I would say is we haven't seen we saw an increase in volume in sort of online social media hatred um, and often violent threats towards Muslims um, post Woolwich. And while the volume has died down, I would say that the content has become more vitriolic, more dangerous. Um, which is quite worrying. Can I, you see, one of the problems is, you know, we, we were uh, recording these events after the 9-11, and uh, I remember at the time, within two months, we recorded 800 attacks on Muslims in Britain after 9-11, when it didn't happen here, it happened in the United States. Um, I actually, what I understand, you know, being involved in this, is that majority of Muslims don't actually report things. You know, when I go, even, even when they report it, you know, if I, I go quite frequently to the mosque and ask how many of you have been victims of Islamophobic sort of attacks, and few hands goes up. Well, when I start explaining, you know, spatting, you know, abuse, this, 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 I see a huge number of hands goes up. It's because there is an under-reporting and there's internalization of, of you know, uh, this whole uh, Islamophobic attack. That's why we moved away from sitting and waiting for reports to come to us. And we actually started this process of actually doing qualitative and quantitative surveys. And when we did that in the last uh, survey, which is this one, which was done in 2011, uh, long before this recent incident, they, there was 13% of Muslims in Britain said they were victims of physical attack. Now, you could do the math, you know, we, we, we got around 4 million Muslims, and that's a huge number. And, and, and the problem is that they, you know, when you ask people why they feel about what they feel about the media, the politician, and so forth, you see, and I'm not playing party politics, you know, all politicians of all different parties, they actually are not challenging this culture. This culture needs to be changed. I remember uh, Baroness Vasi was talking about this, this culture of uh, Islamophobia after dinner discussions, and it's becoming acceptable to be Islamophobic. And this is what we need to move away from. And nothing whatsoever has been done to address that issue. All we are getting is that, you know, few thousand pounds to actually record the incidents if somebody calls and tells us this is taking place, which is inadequate. Well, is that fair? I mean, something is being done, isn't it, to say nothing is being done? To say nothing is being done is grossly exaggerated. The work of Telmama is immensely important. If you look at what the Community Securities Trust has done over the years in terms of its regular reporting of anti-Semitic incidents, that provides a data set, it provides evidence, it starts to change the public debate. Telmama is a very young organisation, but it's already having a similar impact. And what we have is a baseline for what was happening in terms of anti-Muslim hate crime and other anti-Muslim incidents before Woolwich. We saw the spike after Woolwich. We've just heard how it is now trending down, as you would expect, which is exactly the experience of the Jewish community in that whenever there's a major incident in the Middle East, like Operation Castle in Gaza or the 2006 Lebanon war, there is sadly a spike in anti-Semitic crime in the UK, and then it trends down again. To say that nothing is being done by the political class is simply wrong. I said, I said nothing adequately being done. And it actually is really, it, it is totally uh, outrageous to compare us with the Community Security Trust. Community Security Trust is being trained by the police, it actually sits embedded into the police uh, system, and it's got millions of uh, pounds of annual budget. And on top of that, it actually harassed not only 
Muslims who are against the state of Israel, but even Jews who are against the state of Israel, is actually a Zionist organization, which actually not only, you know, only what protects... Do you mean by what do they well, do? you know, 1,000 eggs being thrown at the house of the Rabbi Cohen in, in, in Manchester. And, you know, when you go and talk to him, and he's so outraged by the community Zagij Trust of, of the fact that, you know, he's involved in protection of only particular type of Jewish community who are pro Zionist and no one else. And, and if anything, the community security trust has been bullying and throwing people who, from Jewish community who are against the, the state of Israel out of meetings, etc., etc. Now, you know, I don't want to get involved in that because it becomes a, but, but you know, to actually say that, you know, um, getting, giving uh, a Muslim community 240,000 pounds a year to sit down and collect information when we know people are not coming forward to give the information is not adequate. What I'm saying, we need to change the culture which exists in the conservative party, exists in the liberal party, exists in the labor party, exists in the whole aspects of our community. We need to change it in the same way that, you know, over 20 years ago, there was a huge number of sort of um, homophobia. And the culture was changed in such a way that homophobia is no longer there. That wasn't done by creating, you know, security trust uh, a st a structure to have policing outside every, you know, every gay club or any gay person in the house. It was done through changing of the culture. That is what we need. We don't need, uh, you know, uh, private security for the Muslim community like the way that the private security for the Jewish community. We need to change the culture. Well, what about the role of the media, which we haven't yet come on to? I mean, has that got better, do you think, as part of this need to change the culture? Do you think the way issues to do with the Muslim community are reported in the media and crime issues that perhaps affect Muslims or are done by Muslims, has that got better? We need to remember that the media is not a single uniform thing. It is a collection of different media organizations, both television organizations and newspaper organizations, and, of course, social media, what happens over the internet. So if we just take newspapers as an example, at one end you have incredibly responsible newspapers like the Financial Times and The Economist. And I personally am totally happy with the way that the Financial Times and The Economist report is issues to do with the Muslim community. Uh, I subscribe to those newspapers or that doesn't influence my judgment. At the opposite extreme, you've got newspapers like The Daily Express, which to my mind regularly use Muslim-related scare stories, you know, Sharia law coming to the UK, here's another picture of Anjum Chowdhury on the front page, as a way of selling newspapers. I'll be quite blunt, the Daily Express is an extremely unhelpful newspaper. The Financial Times and The Economist are extremely helpful newspapers. Then there's a sort of spectrum in between. You know, newspapers like The Independent, I would put in the same place as The Financial Times and The Economist, I you know, choose to read one newspaper rather than another for many reasons. And that, so there is a spectrum. You shouldn't label the media as a single sort of blanket thing because that isn't the way it is. No, no, well, I wasn't really trying to do that. I just thought we should, rather than talking only about the police and recording crime, we yeah. should uh, see what the role of, of quotes, the media is generically. Mm -hmm. But uh, what, what's your view? What about broadcast media? No, Did, do, I mean, do you I mean, see I mean, improvements the whole, there? No, the whole spectrum of media, even going into sort of uh, popular media, you know, Hollywood and so forth, there is no good guy Muslim in any of the Hollywood films that you see. It's always the Muslim is a bad person, is either a terrorist or is a murderer or is a, you know, uh, well, some sort of fanatic. Because I want to and, disagree and I with think, you. And, well, you let know, me take a concrete yeah, example. Yeah. Zero Dark Thirty, the quest for bin Laden, yeah. showed unambiguously the leader of the, anti, the CIA's anti-bin Laden program was a Muslim. He was shown praying in his office. Now, the real person uses prayer beads, but he doesn't necessarily pray in his office. But that is a specific, concrete media re representation which totally yeah, disagrees that, with what you that just was, said. That was, you know, th look, that was just to justify a uh, thing of chasing bin Laden and, and, and making a political uh, statement. But the reality is that when you look at the whole thing, you know, even, even, even uh, um, you know, uh, sort of Disney cartoons, you know, it actually there always is, is a, you know, is the character is actually not a, a, a very positive character. The reality is that, you know, we've done a lot of research on that and, and, and you know, a lot of work has been done on the whole lot of literature. And this is a factual uh, fact 
that this unfortunately is the case. And this is why, you know, we've got that, you know, on one side, you know, politicians of all political parties, when something like uh, Woolwich happens, they come and say, oh, Muslim community is, uh, you know, positive thing about it. But the next thing is they actually set up institutions and organizations to try to de-radicalize the whole of the Muslim community. By then default is actually saying there is a Part, you know, there is something inherently not wrong just in the Muslim community, but it also goes beyond that and in the Islam. And those are the messages that people get. And these are the messages that actually leads to uh, legitimization of targeting and promoting hate in the society. And, and, and unfortunately, nothing is being done. Nothing is being done to actually, we are spending billions and billions on anti-terrorism activity when we know that it's more likely for us to die of a you know, cold or, or superbug at the hospital than act of terrorism. But we are not really spending any money to create a better balance in our society, a more sort of favorable way of looking at one another well, in our Lani, society. Let, let me come back to you, We're getting close to the end of the program. What is your... Uh, reporting tell you about the way in different parts of the media the issue of Islam is, is handled? Sorry, is that directed to me? Yes, it was. It was to, uh, your reporting. Uh, okay, sorry, I think I cut out for a moment. Would you mind just repeating that, please? Well, I just wanted to know what your experience of the way different parts of the media handle uh, Islam and Muslim issues. Is there any um, improvement in the way it's done over, it's compared to you know, a couple of years ago or five years ago? Can you spot anything improving? Um, I mean, I think in terms of, as I said, our focus isn't necessarily on sort of conventional media. We, we operate more in the social media realm, um, but I, which is obviously quite new. Um, but I think sort of in terms of conventional mainstream medias, um, we're entering a time, I think, when Muslims are vilified. And going back to the issue about film in the 70s, 80s, early 90s, the Russians were who was being vilified in, Amer in the American film industry in particular. And I think that increasingly it does tend to be trending towards Muslims being that new sort of alien enemy, which is unfortunate. And I think sort of impacts and adds to this sort of problem of alienation that has been discussed throughout this talk. Okay, well, thank you very much. It's obviously an issue that we're going to be, a, unfortunately, having to discuss for, for a long time to come, I think, in spite of what the best efforts of everybody on this program. So thank you very much, Amani al Shaiwe. Thank you, Mosul Shahjudeh. And thank you, Mohammed Amin, for coming. And thank you, of course, for watching.